Hey, calling all local restaurants like they still cooking up a madness. We know times are tough, but here at Uber Eats, we would like to help you keep delivering safely to the nation. And that's why we're offering fast, free sign-up for all new restaurants, so you can keep bringing it. Because you know how we do, baby. Uber Eats, still bringing it. I did that myself, I'm a very talented guy. There are definitely some things that I am acutely aware of and I was aware of way before I did any of this stuff, way before any of you lot knew this uh, stupid face and the things that I do, that that material and finances and wealth and the trappings of this dunya, like nothing is, none of it is satisfying really in any way or lie. It's a placebo uh, to kind of plug holes and fill gaps. And you know, man, ultimately, we're, we're all going to meet the same demise. We're all going to end up in the ground. We talk about equality. That's the one real pure guaranteed form of equality of every single one of us. We're going to end up in the ground. And when I do, what am I taking with me? What, what, did, what did I leave behind for the world? And what kind of human being was I whilst I was here? Was I, <laughs> was I engaging in the good and forbidding the evil? Man, I, I don't know. You know, we're into the last few nights of Ramadan now and um, I'm so weak. Like today is a real day where I've had time to reflect and say, I have so many deficiencies within my, within my personality, within my character traits that I need to fix if I'm really gonna be the type of believer, man, Muslim that I should be. One of my things that I have never been able to handle is like it's it's deep in me. It's, it's from the devil. Is my ability to forgive people if I have a grudge with somebody or if I have beef with someone. I can I can never let go of it, and it's such an indictment on how weak I am as a believer. And I have to get rid of that, and I have to improve upon it. How can I call myself someone who believes in God if I don't have the ability to forgive? Man, he's the most forgiving, most merciful. Like, I've been making a lot of, like, genuine dua, supplication, like, prayer uh, to God, Allah, that, you know, if whatever I'm doing right now is not good for my soul and it's detrimental to people who might look at what I'm doing and it's not going to fill my bank balance in good deeds, forget money, in good deeds, then may he take it away. Man. Like, I don't want, I don't want nothing to do with it. Like I've lived, I've lived, a, I've lived a life, bro. I've lived a life where I'm acutely aware material means nothing. And therefore, if what I do in the context of the art that I'm trying to create and make for you lot, if it ain't good, if it ain't good for me and my family's well-being long-term spiritually, then get it gone. Inshallah to work. Like, get it gone, please. Look at my hair, bro. Oh my. Hi guys, I just want to let you know that I went on a shared Spotify account today to listen to some beautiful recitation and when I clicked onto it, what started playing automatically? Harry Styles, which means Lumbu has been listening to Harry Styles during the holy month. Pooh, that's why I adore you. All that business. I've not had anything to eat or drink in 17 hours since 3am and now I'm completing another 10k. I think I've always had a passion to do good in, in this world. I think a lot of that might originate from my father. The poor and needy 
need this and deserve our support this Ramadan. I remember when he used to go into work, he would take a sponsor form and go and collect money for whenever I'm doing fundraisers. And he would do this without me asking. And he'd come back with, you know, several hundreds of pounds. He was doing it because he really believed in what I was doing. We're down to the last hundred kilometers. It's painful, it's, it, it hurts when I remember how we lost him. When I first run my first ever marathon, the London Marathon, there's one part of that marathon and had nothing left in me. I was so deflated and I thought my family hadn't turned up. Uh, they were supposed to come from Coventry and I didn't see them thinking, I'm running these... Hey, to all the delivery legends out there, thank you for your amazing work, man. And as a way to say thank you from us, check your inbox, there's a little sign there for you. You know, because of you, Palma number 37 doesn't have to go out and get her milk herself. Hey, to all the delivery legends out there, thank you for your amazing work, man. And as a way to say thank you from us, check your inbox, there's a little sign there for you. You know, because of you, Palma number 37 doesn't have to go out and get her milk herself, because you deliver it to her. She's very grateful. Ain't that right, Pam? Pam? She's got a hearing aid. But she's very grateful. Hello to everybody in your house. How are you doing? Very important question I have for you. Who is the greatest MC? Who is the greatest lyricist that we have in the United Kingdom? Let's go. Quite simple, ladies and gentlemen. In my opinion, the greatest lyricist that we have in this country go by the names of Loki and they go by the names of Akala. Why'd you say that, Gaz Khan? I'll tell you why, mate. Because Akala and Loki, in particular Loki, can seamlessly switch between political commentary, social commentary, with outstanding bars, but I also believe that those two in particular, Loki and Akala, if it came to clashing now, if it came to clashing now, if it came to clashing now, could lay down anybody dead in the ground, put the soil on top, six feet under, finish, thank you, God, they have gone to the heaven. They are dangerous MCs. But I want to also say, on a side note, we have world-class MCs all around this country. JK, Dave, uh, Crepton Conan, and most importantly, j -Ho Ah. Eagle Barak, huh? Ta ta. She stood on the bin and she fell off the bin and then we pushed her and turned her in the bus lane and it was an accident. And, and, and then I tried to tombstone the guy. Put your car at the remove on the rock. You've been doing not that tough, yeah? You've been active in the joints. Listen, dude, the thing is, yeah, I remember, I remember like the first time someone was like, rise, 
Mm-hmm. And you're an actor now, yeah? Is that you? <laughs> you was on Netflix with Idris Elba, so... And you're an actor now, yeah? Because I still think you're a dead, <laughs> Don. Like, I'm, I'm having to navigate... Well, you know what it's like. We have to navigate them conversations. You went up from Leamington Spa, where, like, I'm so proud of everything that you've done. In two years, you're acting with Idris Elba on Netflix. I'm gonna, like, <laughs> don't try and beg it. You're gonna be Luther next year. Because if you're Luther, you're gonna get banned. Bro, this is the life that we live. When did you start, like, getting into comedy and that? I fell into this accidentally. <laughs> Honest to God. I, the reason why I say accidentally is I was a teacher. A full time. You were a teacher? Yeah, secondary school, like, like fully. And you know, bro, a lot of people said to me, like, how do you go from that to where you are now? Yeah, bro. And truth be told, there's no magic route that I took. What I do know is them kids prepared me. 